First of all, I should say thanks to Professor Sepana for his very kind word and very kind introduction. Also to the Vice President, thank you very much for coming. Uh, it's, uh, my name is Yongdan Li. It's really a great pleasure for me to join the community of Arto. Uh, it's really a, a very beautiful campus. Today I give a talk on the topic Industrial Catalysis Looks to the Future. Uh, I just put the uh, four subtopics. Anyway, I just introduce my research field. First, the catalysis basics. Catalysis actually exists as a natural phenomenon. For instance, in natural evolution, catalysis played a key role in creating the biosphere. Catalysis also gives birth to the pillar attacks in modern life. For instance, microbial enzyme applications enable delicious food. For instance, bread, beer, and wine are all based on catalytic processes. Also, sulfuric acid production was coined as a modern, as a mother of modern chemical industry, because the installation of the sulfuric acid production uh, marks a milestone for starting the modern chemical industry. Actually, what is a catalyst? A catalyst is a substance that increases the rate at which a chemical reaction approaches equilibrium without itself becoming permanently involved in the reaction. It's quite a simple definition. Anyway, it takes a long time for human or for the scientific community to understand the catalytic phenomena and to utilize ca catalytic phenomena. For instance, uh, before beginning of 20th century, uh, scientists described catalysis as a physical effect. At the beginning of the 20th century, Paul Sabatier proposed the concept of instable intermediate. After 25 years, Hugh Scott Taylor proposed the concept of active site. Then, how catalytic sense supports the humanity? If you count up to now, around 85% of the proce chemical processes are based on catalytic processes in modern chemical industry. Uh, among the catalytic processes, around 80% uh, are heterogeneous, and 17% are homogeneous, and 3% are based on biocatalysis. Actually, in the last century, catalysis contributed a lot to the modernization of the hu uh, human life. For instance, ammonia synthesis secured the f enough food to the humanity. And uh, automotive emission control, it's actually a technology package, it's not a, a single technology. Uh, secure and clean air to the humanity. And the oil refin refining technology solved the energy problem for the hu humanity. It was at the beginning of last century, Fritz Haber uh, uh, discovered the earliest uh, p a possibility of the catalyst to synthesize ammonia. Ammonia is a key molecule to sustaining a growing world population. This chart gives a correlation of the growth of the population in the last century to the production of ammonia. You can see it's very parallel. Actually, during the last century, uh, ammonia, 
started from very simple setup and a very small production. Now, if you go to the industry with one reactor, the productivity is around half million ton to one million ton per year. So also along with the, uh, uh, the uh, 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 ammonia produc uh, production uh, from the very beginning, quite a number of Nobel Prize was given to the chemist and also some engineer. Another package of technology was the automotive emission control. It was during the Second World the, it was actually 1943 in July uh, the 26 Los Angeles citizen suddenly got a smog. Now it's very popular in China. So uh, as, a, as a moment, Los Angeles uh, evidence just thought it was because of the attack of the Japanese with chemical warfare. After the Second War, because of the development of catalytic technology, if you go to Los Angeles, the air quality becomes very good. Actually, it was based on a catalyst, a three-way catalyst. It's a very small uh, reactor now in every car. It works for almost uh, 15 to 20 years, converts directly, simultaneously, the carbon monoxide, the hydrocarbon, and the uh, nitrogen oxide to carbon dioxide, water, and the nitrogen. So it, it's a very efficient and also very durable reactor. Another technology package is the refining of fuels and the chemicals. Uh, actually, the modern fuels are the blend of many distillates from refining processes. The key process are based in three categories of catalysts. One is hydrotreating, one is cracking, one is reforming. Actually, if you see one tank of gasoline, it comes from different distillates and come from different catalytic reactors. Then the next part of my, pre my presentation, I will describe my opinion on how to, to face to the ground challenge and also the possible, the potential solution. The next ground challenge, challenge is really the energy efficiency. For instance, uh, most of the energy transformation technology has been based on thermal process. The Carnot cycle is the limit of the efficiency. For instance, the thermal plant is uh, a power plant is only 30 percent on efficiency uh, on the efficiency of the transformation. The integrated uh, combustion cycle is around 40 percent. Gasoline engine is only 25%. Diesel engine is 40%. The world energy consumption is huge, is uh, 13,276 million ton oil equivalent. So if you only can save 1%, it's a, already a huge amount. Also because of the low energy transformation efficiency, we got another challenge with the biosphere on the Earth because every year, every year 6.4 billion tons of carbon equals to 23.5 billion tons of carbon di dioxide are released to the atmosphere uh, from the activity of the human society. Then, what is the solution? So, in my opinion, perhaps the first uh, potential solution is to utilize biomass. 
Biomass is enough for fuel the, and the chemical. The most uh, abundant biomass are cellulose, hemicellulose, and the lignin, and also we c the biosphere <coughs> produces. Uh, we can easily get 150 billion ton every year for supply. Actually, biomass won the energy supply to to the to humanity before the 20th century, but because of the industrial revolution, coal, natural gas, and petroleum be became the major energy. You can notice biomass now is rising up as a, the source of energy. Recently, we contributed, in, we proposed a process with S analysis based on molybdenum carbide catalyst, we tr uh, successfully transformed the craft lignin to higher aircraft and the esters and also iron phenols and benzene aircraft. It's 100% conversion. And uh, also we uh, uh, proposed some primary mechanism for the reaction. Another possible solution, perhaps, is the photocatalytic water splitting. Actually, the Earth receives a huge amount of solar energy all the time. If per second, it almost five million tons of standard coal. So now it's a very active uh, field, for instance, to transform the solar energy to uh, pure hydrogen and oxygen. Now, the anode, the output of the anode uh, is quite high and also quite stable, but still only around 20% of the theoretical value. Uh, the cathode is still very unstable and also uh, not very sat satisfactory. Anyway, even uh, based on such uh, immature uh, catalyst, we already um, got uh, two orders of magnitude, magnitude higher of efficiency than the uh, uh, natural process, the, the, the plant uh, photosynthesis. Another possible solution is I think it could be solid oxide fuel cell, because solid oxide fuel cell is, uh, has a high energy efficiency and also available without hydrogen. Also has high tolerance to impurity. It's very high, uh, for instance, if we can transform the conventional coal-fired plants for power generation, then if we could utilize carbon fuel cell in a large scale, then the energy efficiency could be 80%. Anyway, how to scale up is uh, a lot of challenge. Also, the, for instance, for the solid oxide fuel cell, for, uh, this result is with methano as a fuel, and uh, we got quite uh, stable re uh, output, and uh, this result was obtained with a biochar, and uh, it's quite high, it's uh, uh, output, uh, power output. Another possible solution is the large-scale storage of the uh, solar and the wind energy uh, in electricity form. Actually, uh, we propose a technology with the so-called non-aqueous redox flow battery. Now, the windmill and uh, the photovoltaics for the electricity generation are already in very large scale, but uh, we cannot connect the output directly to the existing power grid. So 
uh, there should be some uh, large scale. Yeah, uh, uh, up to now, the batteries for lithium battery the already quite major, and uh, uh, everywhere you can see hybrid cars, but uh, it's only suitable for small scale. For instance, if for uh, one kilowatt to one gigawatt, uh, gigawatt, then the storage of the electricity is a completely different topic. So the flow battery is a really a reactor. Then with this kind of reactor, we uh, store the uh, cathodite and analyte in separate tanks. So the scale can be very large. Anyway, for this new technology and development, the scale up and also the mechanism need a lot of exploration. So anyway, I can summarize, uh, make some remar final, final remarks. The catalytic sense and its technology are in the core of modern industry and among the pillars to support the modern life. Industrial catalysis remains in the most efficient tool to deal with the challenges in present and the future time. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>